Thank you, Rising. This beautiful sunshine. Just love it here, my desk. It's a glorious, crisp morning here in Sydney. Good morning. I want to speak to you about expansion and your field, your energetic field. And I had this incredible uh, download just then. I, I, I kind of came up empty this morning for a chat, but you know, sometimes when I sit in that emptiness, things pop in. And I was thinking yesterday, I should talk about the field more because a lot of us are working on our energy. We're working on shifting our emotions. I know that's why you're here. That's the type of thing that I talk about. Uh, but this morning, this dropped into me. I wrote it down. Without inspiration, people perish. Without personal growth, you don't heal or get healthy. And without business growth, the business may fail. So are you expanding? Do you know more today than you knew yesterday? Are you just sitting content with what you know already? I like to challenge myself to learn new things every day. Actually, in fact, like to be challenged by you if the belief system sits differently. And that's a special position of power to sit in. Because it challenges my ego. It challenges what I think I know and it and it actually propels me into studying and learning some things that, from another perspective. And I think that's the whole point of this earth journey. What do you think? It can be challenging though, I'm not going to lie. So yesterday, just before I went to work, I picked up my Healy device. And if you haven't seen this, it measures your quantum field. Absolutely amazing technology. I popped it on just to do a reset before I worked on my client's energetic field. Because when I work on the field, I can hear, hear their things. I can see their things. I can see ancestral things. I can see their emotional things. And I don't want my things to get in the way of that being blurry or helpful for that particular client. So yesterday when I ran the Healy, I, I punched in a really ambitious affirmation because you punch in an affirmation and it uses your quantum data which is your vibrational things your name your date of birth where you live etc and it sort of pinpoints where you're sitting in the quantum field and I don't know how it works but it's so so accurate it came back yesterday to me that I was running in control and I was to be honest angry I sat there thinking, oh my gosh, I've got 40 minutes until the client comes in. Where the hell am I using control? Because I kind of have been working really hard at surrendering control for the last six years or so. Spirit said that to me. No control, no manipulation and showed me uh, a pendulum actually because I thought that might be from people entering my field. But no, I was shown it's also me and the influence that I have on others that I will be much more magnetic and much more efficiently used if I can surrender all control, all manipulation. And you think you've gotten to that point. And so this was a shock, but I trust this little device because I see what it brings up for other clients as well as myself. And I thought, no, I'm just going to sit with it. And I was able to pinpoint, hone in to this tiny little subconscious belief that's sitting there in my peripheral. It's long forgotten. And it wasn't something that was conscious. And I want to speak into this today. If you're not manifesting what you're looking for, it's because of those subconscious beliefs that are blocking you. So if your goal is A and your belief system's B, it's you have no resonance you have no matching of that wave you've got to release the belief and then flow with what you're asking for and that's the faith activation so the authentic grateful uh mindset is flexible actually yeah the authentic grateful flexible mindset is okay to say yep i don't have all the answers i'm learning as i'm moving I'm learning from every single person I meet, albeit alchemy sometimes, right? A lot of the people we meet teach us what we don't want. And that's great. That's an integral lesson. But I wanted to uh, sort of tap into something really um, alchemic today, which is from 1 John 5 verse 8, and it's this. And this may blow your mind, but it says this, the spirit, the water, and the blood, these three are one. I want to show you how it's talking about your personal quantum field as a fractal. So the projection in your energetic body is the water. Yeah, the 
primordial water that were God created out of. You're holding every vibration in that water field. We know now about fascia being water and that requires stretching. It's a crystalline matrix in your body. We know about the cells holding water structure. We know that most of us are dehydrated and that water is like a mirror. So whatever you're speaking into the water, that's what the water is holding. So think about your voice as a vibration now. And just like God did, you're a baby God, small g. You speak into the water and the water holds the vibration and becomes a creation. Now the blood, how does that link in? Well, the blood is the fire, the blood is the soul, the blood is light that's slowed down. You've got these three things working together as alchemy. That'd be... That would be the Godhead within you, those three elements, because you're an elemental being. But the spirit is the breath. So yeah, we, I talk to you all the time about emotions. I've mentioned to you that fear is a spirit. That's what Christ said, not me. So if fear is a spirit, what is a spirit then? It's something that's right. It's an energy that's riding on my breath that's causing a cause and effect within the water field. Uh, and it's disconnecting the light within me from source energy, from the almighty universal mind. And that's where my soul belongs, right? But my vibration cannot get there until I have orchestrated um, enough expansion, enough growth to be able to connect in. Is that making sense? Drop me a little comment if you think that you have any questions or you think I'm not making sense because often I don't make sense, let's be honest. But here's the thing. God is the essential fire that's in everything, including you. And that's why it's important to honor everyone you meet, whether that fire is connected or expanded or whether that fire is contracted and hidden within a vibration that's holding their potential back. They still have the God essence within them if there is life. Blood is the life force. Blood is, in fact, slowed down light. Blood is your energetic field that connects you to your star portal. And what, uh, what is the light conductor within the body? Well, that's minerals. Now, isn't that a star being thing? So we've got minerals in the earth, and at the moment, all the earth's been raped and pillaged. There's not enough minerals there. And Christ comes in and says, be the salt, be the light. But he actually mentions, um, don't be bad salt. So what's the difference? Well, it's osmosis. Because if you take good uh, sea salt connected in with the water, you're going to extract minerals from unprocessed sea salt. And it's the minerals that conduct the light. So it's absolute magic. It's absolute alchemy. It's science. It's spirituality. It's all of it. You can't separate one from the other. It's all the same thing. And that's where we're all speaking the same language. And I've learned this being very challenged over the eons, thinking that I had a spiritual mindset and resisting science or resisting quantum things or resisting things that didn't fit the knowledge that I had back then. And now I realize that everybody's speaking the same, same language. We're just looking at it from a different perspective of the crystalline being that we are. So together we've got these answers. Now know this, no fire burns without oxygen. And oxygen rides on the breath. So no wonder we have a resurgence of breath work happening. Uh, an expansion of the cellular structure with the breathing in. You're a complicated organic plant with emotions, right? You need those minerals. You need that oxygen. You need that sunlight to connect in. You need your roots grounded. You are everything that plant is and yet more because the divine chooses to live within you. Now, when I work on somebody's field, as I mentioned, and this is your gift too, I've always had a sensitivity since I was young that I was able to feel when something wasn't right. Somebody walked into the room and it often got misdiagnosed as me being judgmental. But it wasn't because often I wouldn't even have a thought in my mind about that particular person, just a caution, just a warning. Now that I'm tuning in and honing in those sensitivities, and you can do this too, when you work and connect in somebody else's field, 
You have the ability to see or hear for them too, because you're one cell, I'm another, and my neighbor's another, and that friend over there's another, and that friend over there's another. We all have this divine spark of light, of the essence of God within us, and it's what we're holding within our field that is either plugging us into the universal mind or disconnecting us and separating us. And that can be chaos. And you have the energy within you, which is the mindset, which is the feelings that you're holding, which aren't wrong. They're just your lesson uh, to either expand on the feelings that you're feeling or release them. Now, have a look at this. It's a power of surrender. That's what I'm going to entitle that today. The energy of wanting is a desperate energy. So if you were trying to manifest anything, be it a partner, be it finances, be it um, a business plan, be it uh, any type of blessings, healing, if you are too desperate for it, you are showing the universal mind a position of lack. That is not the essence of divinity within you. There's your wave disconnect. If you are holding this position of lack, you are resisting. Whereas faith and trust are the opposite. They are, I desire this, I want it, I trust the process, I release, I breathe it out, and then the wave comes back to me. And the way of getting to that is gratitude, is the opposite to being desperate. Gratitude, being grateful for what I have now, who I am now in my growth stage. I'm not comparing myself to you over there that might be more advanced on your spiritual walk. I'm not comparing to myself to you over there that may have more followers on your social media when you're talking about the same things as me. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not comparing myself to somebody at the gym that's been working out their whole life and they know what to do because it's become automatic. It's become autopilot. You know too, it's written within you. If your goal is to get healthy, you know the way. You just have a belief system that's holding you back. You have an emotion that's holding you back. You have an emotion of or two or three or four or five, a build up of what you're holding within you that's holding you back in resistance as a mindset that's become part of your ID, part of your identity. And that's what I challenge you to release today because without expansion, there is contraction. And this, this works in anything that we're talking about today. Without, uh, with knowledge or with wisdom, without expansion, there is contraction. And what, I'm, what I thought I had, what I thought I was holding, is actually dwindling because I'm not adding to it. This is the story of the talents, I believe. Are you adding to your talents to you today? Are you adding to your health today? Are you adding to your mindset today? Are you adding to any little goal that you're walking towards today? Because the fields are ripe. Now, I want to finish today's little chat with something that I saw in, in the sky in 2017. I was meditating and praying in my bedroom and Spirit said to me, look up. And I looked out of my bedroom window for a split moment and there was a cloud shaped like a horse with a rider and a sickle. Now, 2017 was pre this season that we've been through. But I heard this, the fields are ripe. My gosh, what are we talking about? Are we being measured by the field that we're holding currently? I believe so. I challenge you today to expand. It's not too late. This awakening has to happen within you in order to think of greater things. And those greater things will include the collective, not just you. If you're still operating in greed state or ego state, you'll only be thinking of your own stuff. You'll only be thinking of your own money, your own growth, your own business, your own things, and that's a position of lack. Plug into the universal mind and pull in from the etheric realm. Remember that the etheric realm is the blackness, the darkness of the almighty God that's within us, inside you too. There's blackness. I'm not afraid of the blackness anymore. The blackness shows me that the light is bright. Hope this helps. Drop me a comment if it does. Tag somebody if you think it helps them. Had a beautiful message from one of my followers the other week saying, I can't believe that 
your videos don't have more interaction. And sometimes I ponder that too, but the expansion within me knows that all of this is practice for where spirit's leading me to. And I'm so, so grateful for that because it's the ones and twos that you activate in this faith process that could reach the millions. And that's all that matters. We are energetic beings and what you are holding is a spark plug for another. That's why we feel so great when we're in somebody's field of compassion, unconditional love and encouragement. Be that today to somebody else that you meet. You transmute light using the eyes, the windows to the soul. So give somebody a smile where your eyes crinkle up. That's a proper smile, right? Not a fake. Speak to somebody from your heart space. Send them, throw them energy without them even being conscious of it. You can do that wherever you are in a queue at the bank or at the supermarket, on the street when you walk past somebody sad. Throw your field over them and, and just speak to them spirit to spirit, not flesh to flesh. It's really effective, this trick. And the position of sitting in loving yourself, that's the best place the best space to see your own expansion because you will not get any more for self if you don't love what you already have. I love me, therefore I love you. And that's what matters. We're all unlearning and there's no judgment in that. Expand your field today and stretch it over another so that we can shift this earth plane really, really quickly. I love you. See you soon.